All the talk has been about Shohei Otani, as it should be, but there is another guy, a pitcher, that we believe would be a great fit for the Halos. Let's talk about Yamamoto and his fit on this team. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you want to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and become a Locked On every day. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. Thank you for being here for this episode of Locked On Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the First Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Mike, uh, you know, it, it's funny. Uh, yesterday, our subscriber count on YouTube hit 6,666. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good thing that didn't last long though, because uh, <laughs> we we definitely got over that. So, but that was we pretty, got some help. Yeah, that was a pretty <laughs> funny moment uh, for an Angels podcast, right? Yeah. Uh, hey, look, our this is our second season here at Locked On Angels, our second off season, and starting next Monday, this coming Monday, actually, we'll be going down to three episodes a week until right before spring training. We'll pick it up again to five episodes then, but we will have some in between content, short form content for you between our regular episodes on today's show mike we're talking about yamamoto yep we're talking about the bullpen additions that the angels made and of course they made a few more roster moves but let's start with the headline here let's talk about yoshinobu yamamoto yeah it sounds like the red sox were trying to prioritize him at the winter meetings and then we got news that Steve Cohen flew to Japan last week to meet with Yamamoto. And then he is supposed to meet Yamamoto. He's supposed to meet with the Yankees in the U S on Monday. Ooh. Now, maybe the Yankees won't want to meet with him because they made that Juan Soto trade. No, so they, they need starting pitching. In <laughs> they the do worst way yeah. desperately. Right. Maybe Juan can pitch. Uh, <laughs> the Yankees are one of the top candidates and the Red Sox, the giants, the Dodgers, the Cubs, and the angels have been rumored to be tied with Yamamoto as well. And we're told these are all rumors, but we're told that he's going to sign after Shohei Otani signs before the end of the month. Now there's rumors that Shohei is going to make an announcement about who he will be with on Sunday night. So we're going to cover that on Monday, no matter if he does sign or if he doesn't sign, we'll talk about that. But Johnny, a 25 year old ACE on the free agent market is a rarity. And so what must the angels do to lock in and to lock up Yamamoto? Mike, I think it's going to take uh, a willingness to go above the luxury tax because the numbers out there right now are 10 years, 300 million. And, you know, yeah. we see numbers like that all the time. We see right. the stuff like that fly around all the time. It could come in a little bit less than that for sure. But I wanted to remind everybody that last year when we were talking about Kodai Senga, we were talking about what kind of deal he could get. And to be fair, Senga came over here at age 29. Yeah. And so his market was probably a little bit reduced because of that. But here's the thing. Uh, when you think about Masahiro Tanaka's deal that he got with the Yankees, it was seven years in 2014. Uh, I, I believe off the top of my head, it was about 22 million a year mm -hmm. in today's market, Mike with inflation, that's about 28 million a year. Yeah. And yeah. they got him for seven years. So think about that for a second. Right. A 28 million, seven year deal. So Yamamoto will probably fall into that category of 28 to 30 simply because he's younger. Mm -hmm. uh, he's he's 25 years old. You can lock up a, a free agent ace uh, at this age. And uh, there was somebody who brought up um, just kind of the injury risk that comes with starting pitchers sure. from yeah. Japan. but. Here's the numbers I pulled. Tanaka had 1,317 innings pitched before he came over here. And of course, he dealt with some issues. Yeah. Uh, Kodai Senga had 1,089 innings pitched under his belts when he came over here. And Yamamoto has 967. So there's a yeah. lot less mileage on that arm than some of the other guys who have come over to the States uh, to come pitch 
in MLB. So I, I, look, the Angels are going to have to pony up. I, I heard Roger and Trent talking on the radio yesterday yeah. about how that's a risky gamble. It's a risky move for a guy who's not pitched an inning in Major League Baseball, but it's been done before, and yeah. and these deals can pay off. So I it, it worries me because they are the spokesperson for Artie Marino. If he had a direct line yeah. to, uh, to the fans, to the fans, it would yeah. be through Roger and Trent, right? That's what I wanted to ask you about because you did tweet like, "Hey, says a lot." So do you think that maybe perhaps they're uh, trying to control the narrative a bit there and not wanting people to get their hopes up for Yamamoto? What do you think it is? It's just yeah, it's a matter of if the Angels aren't able to do it then prepare yourselves for the conversation of, well, it probably wasn't a, it was too risky of a move anyway. It's not yeah. something that the Perry should have done. Like that's what it's going to be. Is but that you, your Roger Lodge? No, that's, that's my, <laughs> that's my mishmash, I guess, of, of both of them, right? Of both of them. Yeah. But, but the thing is, is yeah, they're trying to prepare angel fans for not getting Yamamoto. Yeah. And then if they do, you know, that they're going to be tooting that halo honk horn all sure. day long. So sure. Uh, yeah, I, I just think that that didn't sit well with me as a fan listening to yeah. the spokesperson for Artie Marino coming out and saying, well, it's, a, it's really risky. And usually listen, I like Trent. I think Trent actually does a good job of handling the, the nonsense most of the time mm -hmm. that comes from the angels. Um, at the same time, I think that to, to try to poo poo this idea of Yamamoto, come on. Everybody in the league yeah. wants Yamamoto and they know what it's going to cost and yeah. know the risk involved and things like that. Pitchers get hurt all the time. The right. Chris Sale, look at that with the Red Sox. You right. look at Strasburg with the Nationals and you look at Kershaw. I, I did. I looked at the math and Kershaw has been on the IL for $51 million worth of time and wow. days, Mike. So Kershaw has made a ton of money in his career, but he's missed that much time. That's cost. $51 million over his career. Yeah. I, what a weird take that it's risky and that it's this. I mean, it's not, it's not like this is the first time this has ever happened. Well, right? and, and the risk they're talking about is like for a guy who's never pitched in the majors. It's like, come on. Like, right. Did you see him cook team USA yeah. in, in the game? Like, and, were you watching that? Like, and he's a great pitcher and like Shohei never pitched in the majors and right. uh, Tanaka never pitched in the majors and yeah. Kodai Senga. Never, I mean, like that, what a, what a strange what a strange take, which is why if we're going to read into it a bit, which with the angels, you have to kind of read into some things. You wonder what that is. What's the motivation behind that? And, and maybe it's the, it's the cost. Yeah. And I think that that's really what it boils down to. Right. Cause then if they sign Shohei, they may not sign Yamamoto, but I think that getting both of those guys would be brilliant. And, and, and in my GM episode, I went for Yamamoto over Shohei, not because I dislike Shohei, but the Angels really need an ace. They need a great yeah. starter, and Otani's not going to pitch this season. But they can afford both of these guys, and they can push past the luxury tax. They got reports that they were under it, so all of their wheeling and dealing last year got them under the luxury tax, so there isn't going to be a penalty. Right. But the truth is, is that I think that they should go full, you know, full court press <laughs> with yeah. Yamamoto and try to get him because I think that he would be a really great guy at the top of this rotation. Johnny, with those that maybe would disagree with us, and I know that you're in the Yamamoto camp and it would be a great move. Are there better options? I mean, like what would a would a Snell, a Burns, or a Cease be a good option for the Angels? Well, it's it's interesting because everybody has their pros and cons. Yeah. Right. And and with Snell it's going to be another costly contract. The guy's coming off a Cy Young year. And if you look at history, anybody coming off a Cy Young yeah. is going to get paid, right? right? And you look at Robbie Ray and the Mariners and all that. And, and Hey, look at that. Robbie Ray was hurt too. So <laughs> funny, <laughs> yeah. funny how people get hurt, right? Mike. Yeah. Um, it really seems like the angels want to go the trade route. And we've seen a lot more yeah. in that direction. Uh, in fact, there was a, a great article from Sam Blum and Fabian Ardaya, the old, Angels beat writer for The Athletic. Uh, this is a quote from there that says, uh, they're reporting that the Halos are pursuing Alec Manoa from the Blue Jays, mm -hmm. who's 25 years old, under team control through 2027. That's going to be awkward if the Angels land Manoa and Taylor Ward in the same dugout. <laughs> uh, the Angels pissed in that, in that dugout to talk. No kidding. Uh, the Angels have also engaged in discussions on multiple fronts over a wide variety of starting pitchers, according to a person with knowledge of the situation. Hmm. Uh, that's how I want to be known according to a person with knowledge of <laughs> yeah. the situation. Yeah. Uh, this is included targets such as Shane Bieber, 
Mm -hmm. uh, Corbin Burns of the Brewers, uh, Tyler Glass now of the Rays. Yeah. And then, Mike, this one excites me. Uh, Jordan Hicks, who right. is a flamethrower. Can you imagine Hicks and Ben Joyce in that same bullpen? And we're going to talk about the bullpen here in a second. But uh, the truth is, is I think that these names are worthy of a breakdown. And we did want to break them down yeah. earlier this week. And then there was a bunch of winter meeting stuff that happened. <laughs> yeah. So Breaking we're going to save that for tomorrow. But Mike, if, the, if they go the trade route, I get it. It makes sense. They have a lot of controllable starting pitching and right. arms that are intriguing. Right. And so if they make a short-term deal guy for a long-term deal guy in terms of like, you know, Sandoval has a couple of years left versus a one-year deal guy like Corbin Burns, who immediately makes this rotation better. I, I think the Angels are finding that they have some expendable pitching if they want to toughen up this rotation, right? If they want to get a guy who's going to be a front light, front line starter in this one. Yeah, I think with the Angels' history and with Perry's history, it, it feels like they're probably going to move in the direction of making a trade rather than signing a, a big-name free agent. Although it, it does seem like something's cooking, and, and with Ron Washington and his quotes and his behavior at the winter meetings, yeah. it feels like something's cooking. Like, you know, there's some there's something in the bag, right? And so I, I hope that that's the case. And I think that Perry, I've, I've been confident in Perry. I think that he's done the best that he can to put a team together under the restrictions that he has. I, I just am of the opinion that they shouldn't have any restrictions and they should go full bore and, and really make an impact this offseason. It's funny to me that teams like the Padres, the Mets, the Rangers, the Yankees, they're all above the luxury tax, the Braves as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Artie doesn't want to be, uh, doesn't want to go above the luxury tax. Artie Marino is the guy who always wants to be seen as like yeah. one of the guys, right? Yeah. Like the Dodgers and the Braves, all those guys above the luxury tax. I'm shocked that Artie Marino isn't the guy going, Oh, I better do it too. Cause yeah, they can, they're right. not going to outdo me. Right. Yeah. Because that's been his, that's been his, for better or for worse, that's been his MO <laughs> since he's been the owner, right? Like yeah. he doesn't want to be outdone, but he gets outdone behind. Yeah. Every single year he gets outdone yeah. because he won't go above the luxury tax. Johnny and left sitting on our hands. Peer pressure is a real thing, even at 70 plus years old. And even <laughs> if you're an owner in major league baseball, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. So, so let, let's have some peer pressure already. Let's go over that luxury tax. Come yeah, on. Exactly. Hey, we're just getting started here on locked on angels and coming up on locked on angels. We're going to be talking about the bullpen additions that Perry made, yeah. as well as the other roster moves that they made, the Rule 5 stuff. We're going to get into all of that coming right up. So have you tried FanDuel yet? Because if you haven't, I would love for you to try it out. And they are today's sponsor of Locked on Angels. They're America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers like you can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. And so I know you've been thinking about joining FanDuel because we've been talking about it often here on Locked on Angels. And now is a really great time to get involved. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including the spreads, player props, over unders and more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and you can get involved in a really intentional way this NFL season at FanDuel. Again, fanduel.com slash locked on. FanDuel is the official partner of the NFL. It's the Locked On Podcast Network where it's your team every day. And we want to thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen every single day. Locked On Everydayers, don't forget that there is a new 24-7 sports streaming channel on YouTube. It's Locked On Sports Today. They're covering all the top stories in sports 24-7, 365. You'll see local experts from all the individual teams across sports. And, of course, you'll find the national shows that cover the NBA, the NHL, the NFL, all that good stuff. And you might even see Mike and I on there covering the top stories in sports as well. So head on over to Locked On Sports today, hit that subscribe button, and be part of the first ever 24 7 sports streaming channel. Johnny, the Angels went to the 99 cent store and picked up two relievers. I love it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I would love to hear your thoughts. Let's talk about them first. Uh, former Angel Luis Garcia was yeah. re signed. One year, $4.25 million deal. Got to be honest with you, John. 
don't remember this guy at all. It was 2019, Mike. Yeah. So I don't blame you. It was before the the Thanos snap. Year, yeah, so. the before times, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, BC before COVID. Uh, from <laughs> 2021 to 2023, he had an ERA of 362, 155 strikeouts, 49 walks, and 154 innings pitched. He is going to be 37 next month, and yeah. he spent the last two seasons with the Padres. He posted a 373 ERA over 125 games in 120 and two thirds innings. He had a 407 ERA last season in 61 games. That's almost 60 innings, 59 and two thirds, and had a 435 ERA in 2019 with the Angels before leaving as a free agent. He's pitched in 11 seasons. Johnny, his overall ERA is 405. Uh, one of his biggest strengths, according to MLB.com, is that he has pitched in at least 59 games mm. in five of the last six seasons. So he's very durable. We can count on him. He's also held right-handed hitters to a 228 average, including 214 last season. Got a mm. really strong fastball, John, 97 miles an hour last year. And it seems like he would slot into the Angels' bullpen as the setup man for Carlos Estevez. Uh, although I'm sure that they're going to have, you know, some roles that they're going to earn in spring training and figure some things out. Johnny, I got the baseball savant stats up uh, in front of us. I'm and I know be, that I'm a good influence on you. You're the nerd when it comes to this. Look at that ground ball percentage. Yeah. 60.9. He's a ground ball machine. Yeah. And with Ron Washington coming in and Ryan Goings working with the infield, I really see why this is a good move for the angels because they're going to be working on their infield drills and hopefully be a whole lot better and play boring fundamental baseball. Yeah. But if he's a ground ball machine and you've got a great defense behind you, I think he could really have a great season for the halos, right? Yeah, definitely. If uh, uh, you think about the fact that he's got a pretty low K rate and a low whiff rate, that means he's a high contact kind of guy, even yeah. with that 97 mile an hour fastball. So he's not striking out a ton of guys and he's not getting a lot of swings and misses. So the defense is going to have to be really good behind him. He's going to have to keep that ball in the ballpark. But Mike, you're right. That ground ball percentage is good for the 98th percentile in yeah. all of Major League Baseball. Here's what I like about it, and we'll talk about this a bit more when we get to Adam Simber in just a second. Yeah, You need some velocity, guys. You mm -hmm. need hard-throwing velocity, guys. Uh, the walk rate went up for him last year, but in the past it's been... A lot better. The K rate has been higher than it was last year as well. So if he can start putting pitches in the zone and getting guys to swing and miss because he's overpowering them, I really hope that's something that Barry Enright can bring to the table for him. And that's something that they can totally work on this season. It seems to be the emphasis across the board, Mike, is making sure these guys get ahead in counts and hit that strike zone. And I think Luis Garcia is a good candidate for that. Yeah. Mike, it's, 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 uh, not the most cheap deal, but a right four and a quarter million dollar deal. That's the kind of money that you need to be spending on these bullpen arms because I understand he didn't have a great year last year. And the same can be said for Adam Simber as well. And uh, I'll talk about that in just a second, but bullpen arms are flaky. They're there. You don't, never know what you're going to get. You can have Aaron loop with a sub one ERA with the right. Mets. And then he comes right. over to the angels and he's no good. You can have Ryan yeah. to with a decent ERA and he's no good as well. So I I'm actually thrilled that this guy has more fastball velocity. Now we do have a, a funky arm delivery guy in Adam Simber. He's a mm -hmm. right-handed reliever. This one's a little bit better. One year, $1.65 million contract. He's 33 years old. He was non-tendered a contract by the blue Jays because he had a 740 ERA with them last season, but he had a 320 ERA over the previous five years. And I was yeah. watching some, some videos on baseball savant of him. There's actually like a random video feature on there in case you didn't know. And you can, you can see some quick clips from him and he's got a funky delivery and he he's, he's been a consistent reliever over the course of his career, but he was dealing with a shoulder injury last season. So I think you can attribute that 720 ERA to that. He didn't pitch after June 18th. They non-tendered him last month. He posted a 3.20 ERA over 301 games. Listen to this: 278 and two thirds innings over five seasons with the Padres, the Marlins, the Blue Jays, and Cleveland. In 2022, just two seasons ago, he had a 2.80 ERA over 77 games with Toronto, 58 strikeouts and 13 walks in 70 
in two thirds innings. He's a sidearm right-hander whose fastball is around 85, but that's not to worry friends. It's a, yeah. it's a funky sidearm delivery that really fools people. Um, he is going to be a good contrast. And this is what I was excited about. You need a good mix of hard throwing guys like Estevez and Joyce and Soriano and Garcia. And then you get Simber in there with a, with a funky delivery. So, uh, and Caleric as well is coming from the left yep. side. Yep. And so, you know, there's, it's a, it's a mix and match kind of thing with this angels bullpen. My one concern, Mike, is I don't want this guy to end up being the Alex Claudio or the Steve C yeah. of the bullpen this year. And, and the reason why you pay this kind of salary for a bullpen guy is because if, if you can cut and run, then, then you can do it and you don't sure. feel bad about it. You can sure. be done. The problem with the angels in the past is that they've held on to their Claudios and their C checks for way too long. Yeah. And so that's what concerns me here. But, uh, I believe this came from Brent McGuire. This is some good splits here. Um, why don't you take a look at those for us, Mike? Yeah, the Angels are really hoping that the uh, these two pitchers, Garcia and Simber, will bounce back in 2024. In, in, in 23, uh, Garcia had a 407 ERA. His expected ERA was exactly the same in 59 yeah. and two-thirds That's innings wild. Pitched. I don't think I've ever seen that. I haven't either. Uh, Simber really struggled. You mentioned the back injury, not pitching after June 18th. Shoulder, so shoulder. A shoulder. So, so you know, there's there's a small sample size. We had a 740 ERA with an expected ERA of 620 and 20 and two-thirds innings pitched. But in 2022, John, Garcia was 339 ERA with a 283 expected ERA yeah. in 61 innings pitched. And then Simber had a 280, as you mentioned, with an expected 364 ERA in 70 and two thirds innings pitched. And so I, I think that these two guys, again, are going to be candidates for a bounce back. I, I wonder, even though this adds some depth to the bullpen, it, it wasn't the splashy move that I think we were hoping the Angels would make. Uh, are, are you bummed about that, or do you are you are you satisfied in because you can get rid of these guys if they're not great and you're not spending so much money, but you've added two strong arms to this bullpen that needed some help? Stevenson, who the Angels are tied to, yeah, uh, Hicks, Matt Moore, and Shelby Miller are all still sitting out there, Mike. Yeah. And there's no reason the Angels shouldn't be in on those guys. In fact, if the Angels were able to get two, maybe three of those guys. Yeah. And that's their part of the bullpen. Then you might not have to worry about this starting rotation because the bullpen is so dang good at the back of the game. But, yeah. uh, you know, we want to add a starter, but to me, the emphasis here has to be on relievers and with Hicks and Stevenson and Moore and Miller still out there, the angels have so much more to add to this bullpen. And I really think they need to go after those guys because they are just too good, and they're just sitting out there, and the Angels really need to lock down the bullpen if they're going to have any success this season. John, the Rule 5 draft takes place at the winter meetings, and so there's a major league draft, and there's a minor league draft. Mm -hmm. And so the Angels didn't take anybody in the major league. They didn't have anybody that was taken from their roster. Uh, but they did draft two guys in the minor league Rule 5 draft. Uh, they selected first baseman Eric Wagaman. He is 26. He spent 2023 with the Double A Yankees. Mm -hmm. Pretty good slash line, 320 average, a 382 on base, and a 500 slugging. Had a 142 weighted runs created plus. Pretty good. That's fantastic. <laughs> right. 8.8% 8 .8 walk rate, 19.9% .9 K rate, and 136 plate appearances. Uh, Johnny, this is a depth move, I would say, even though he is a young guy, and perhaps the Angels can see what they can do with him in double a maybe he goes to the trash pandas and helps that team i'm trying to think i i believe that if you take a minor league guy i'm I, i'm probably wrong about this but i thought i saw this today i think they have to end up on your triple a team i think they have oh, okay. to be or at least be within the realm of like got it being close to to being called up i could be totally wrong on that sometimes this stuff yeah. confuses me but yeah there's a lot of funky rules yeah Rule five major league is very clear. They have to be yes. on a 40 man roster. Yes. But when it comes to the minor leagues, that's something that uh, not too familiar with, but look, he seems to be like a great candidate, especially a first baseman with some power. Uh, hang on to that guy and yeah. see what you can get out of him because that would be fantastic. The angels also selected right-handed relief pitcher, Ryan Miller in the first round of the minor league rule five draft. He's 27 years old in triple a for Boston last year. He had a four Oh three ERA, 
392 FIP, which is a lot better than that ERA, 25.8% mm-hmm. K rate and a 7.3% wow. walk rate. So you like the K rate, you like the walk rate. Those are good numbers there. And then Mike, Willie Calhoun, yeah. uh, former Texas Ranger. He spent some time with the Yankees last season. And then, of course, right-handed pitcher Travis McGregor uh, also got a minor league deal. So both of those guys, Calhoun and McGregor, got minor league deals with spring training invites. Talk about Calhoun. Yeah, he drove me nuts on MLB The Show because I could never get him out <laughs> with Angel pitching. But that was 2019. Just so like real life. Maybe it was Luis Garcia. And 2019, <laughs> was the last, 2019 was the last time he was good, too. So. Yeah, yeah. So Calhoun had a, a 7-12 OPS with the Yankees in 2023. He played parts of seven years in the majors. And then McGregor has never pitched in the majors. Uh, he had a 382 ERA in uh, AA and AAA with Pittsburgh in 2023. He's a starter, can be a reliever. Again, depth pieces for the Angels and pieces that, if necessary, they can call them up and they were guys that they can count on, especially Calhoun, who has been a major league ball player. So you're not yeah. bringing up somebody that you don't know, Magnuis Sierra, right? Like, right. I mean, even though he was fun to watch, you're bringing up somebody that has been there before and can be a solid fill in piece if there are some injuries and the Angels, as we all know, are notorious for injuries. Yeah, we all know there's going to be injuries and I think I think it's important before we wrap up here to look at all of these moves and even going back to the bullpen stuff. I'm I I know the Angels are not done. Yeah. And I know that the bullpen certainly has more work to be done on it, right? I don't think the Angels are going to be rolling into 2024 with Jimmy Herget in the bullpen, right? right. Like the, right. enough of that. And so there is room for a Miller or a Moore or a Hicks or a Stevenson. When it comes to these roster moves, they're depth pieces. And the Angels actually, you know, getting Eric Wagaman and his 142 weighted runs created plus, that's a guy that you want to hang on to and see yeah. what you can get out of. Yeah. So perhaps there's something there, right? The, the Yankees just didn't have room for him, basically. Now, when it comes to Calhoun and McGregor, again, depth pieces, guys that you can call up to fill in. And I guess... I guess what I'm trying to say here, Mike, is that none of this is very flashy or exciting. Sure. But they're also necessary. These are moves that you have to do to kind of round out the bottom of your barrel, right? You need a base, and and that's what these guys are going to do, aren't they? Yeah, I, I think so. And when I think about the bullpen specifically, John, I wonder if some of these moves are – uh, a precipice of other moves that will be made with some of the bigger names like a mm. Shelby Miller or whoever, because I wonder if Perry would love to not have Sam Bachman in the bullpen and that's have been, him. That's been talked about too, is right? uh, they really see him as a starter long term. Yeah. So maybe yeah. they start to work on that this year. And so if they send him to AAA, let him work through some, some things. I don't think that they're planning on not having Ben Joyce in that bullpen. I think, I think there's a lot that they would love to do with Ben Joyce. And because he's a guy that hasn't gone back to back days, if you have other arms like this, you don't necessarily have to rely on Joyce going back to back days. But sure. I also wonder if maybe they want to give him a bit more time in the minor leagues to marry marinate a bit because the thing that we have been hammering more and more and more on this show lately is that the angel minor league guys, the angel rookies and some of these great prospects just don't have time to develop. They, they haven't had the time to be in the minor leagues and to work on some things. And I think that this might be some of those moves that allows them to be able to do those things so that they're not thrown right into the fire. Now, I think that some of those guys, they they've performed marvelously with, mm-hmm. with what they have. Right. And so I, I wouldn't not want Bachman or Joyce on this team. I wouldn't want, not want like somebody like a Sil Seth on this team. However, if they can get somebody that's quality and fills in for them and can yeah. help us win, then I would really love to see them marinate a bit and then develop into really great pitchers. Like we know that they can be. Can I end the show this way? Are you ready yeah, for this? Okay. Ready. So, uh, you know, we, we are like, Oh, for four on our making the case episodes. <laughs> Over the last two years, because I say we're over four because J. Mayor Candelario and the Reds have agreed to a deal per hmm. source per my, Mark Feinsand. Uh, the deal is pending a physical. Mike, that's interesting to me because that Reds infield is pretty loaded with some yeah. exciting players. So yeah. makes you wonder who's going to be expendable, who are they going to trade, and who are they going to move around. Obviously, the Angels will not be getting J. Mayor Candelario as we were kind of hoping for and made yeah. the case for. But perhaps there's something there that the Angels could work out 
with the Reds because they have a killer infield and a loaded farm system, and they got the number one pick for next year. So the Reds are sitting pretty. Maybe there's a deal that could be done with the Reds there. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. And Locked On Everydayers, remember that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's called Locked On Sports Today, and it's here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts from Locked On and our national shows covering every league. So go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube. Subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Hey, give us a follow at Locked On Angels on Twitter, at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram, whether you're watching or listening, come on over to YouTube, find today's show, comment below the video, hit that thumbs up button. We've been on a roll responding to comments lately and trying to hit every single comment. So we appreciate you getting in there and and talking with us there. Mike, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? Well, Johnny mentioned it already, but we have been tied. The Angels have been tied to a few pitchers, starters and relievers. So we're going to walk through which ones we've been tied to and which ones would be a great fit for the Halos in 2024, whether we sign them as a free agent or we make a trade for them. We're going to talk all about that tomorrow on Locked on Angels. It'll be a uh, a, a rapid fire making the case tomorrow because the these are all the be- The place to be. These are all the names that the Angels are tied to. We're going to try to give you a little bit about each one and then share our thoughts and opinions on if they would make a good fit and if the Angels can get it done. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Thanks for being here with us, friends, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Nothing? No joke? Rapid fire. Rapid fire. Rapid fire. (laughs) 